Good morning, you guys. Welcome back to another day of virtual learning. Okay, so the other day we read this cute little story, Sylvie. Remember, we made predictions. The curious little flamingo who ate everything she saw to change these fun colors. But at the end of the day, she liked exactly who she was and wanted to be pink again. Okay, so this is what we call a fiction story. That means it's fake, it's made up, it's not real, it could never happen. Today, we're going to switch gears <clears throat> and we're going to go into a non-fiction story. That means it's going to be real, it's going to be true, it's going to be real information about flamingos. As you can already tell, this is a real photograph of a real flamingo. Whereas if you look at this, this is definitely just an illustration, okay? Fiction and nonfiction. So just like last week when we read the one room schoolhouse and then we read um, the school's first day of the school, the one room schoolhouse we read and talked about was all true information that really happened in the past. And then you guys did that cute little activity where you took two facts that you learned and you wrote them down and you got to color. So we're gonna do something almost completely similar today. I am going to read Flashy Flamingos and we're gonna learn some new and interesting facts about flamingos. Since our story, Sylvie, was about flamingos, see how we're connecting that? And then your activity for today is the sheet that you will find in your packet. And you can see it's called Flamingos and you've got your cute little flamingo here. And again, just like the One Room Schoolhouse, I'm looking for two facts that you learned about flamingos, okay? And the reason we're doing this is I want to make sure that you guys are actually listening, you're paying attention, you're learning something new, and because it's good writing practice for you, okay? I know we haven't been doing a lot of writing since kindergarten ended, but that's why we're doing a lot of writing now as opposed to just all digital, okay? So good practice writing, good practice listening, and pulling out information. And then of course, when you're done, you can color your cute little flamingo, and we will share some things that you guys learned tomorrow, okay? So again, like the one room schoolhouse, I'm gonna give you a lot of information. If you hear something that you like, you can just pause the video and write it down, or you can tell mom and dad or whoever's with you, hey mom, I learned this, can you write that down so I could write it after? Whichever way is going to work best for you, like I said, this is a video, so you have the opportunity to pause, to rewind, to go back and do whatever you need to to get your information. Okay, then I guess we're ready. So Flashy Flamingos, this is a true nonfiction informational story, okay? So that means there's no illustrator because these are real pictures. When it's a fiction story, there's no illustrators because... You don't need anyone to draw it, they take the picture. Okay, so here is our flamingo, and as you can see, they really are that pink, like in this story. So this says, it's an interesting bird. The flamingo is a wadding bird. It has a long neck and long legs. It is known for its bright pink feathers and the way it stands on one leg in the water. His webbed feet allow him to balance while in the muddy waters. In the wild, flamingos live between 20 and 30 years. When they live in captivity, they can live up to 50 years. Okay, so if you can see this word captivity, it's bold. That means it's that dark black because it is a vocabulary word. So I will, of course, tell you what that means. So captivity is like if they're living in a zoo where they're protected, okay? So it says if they're living out in the wild where they can come and go as they please, they live about 20 to 30 years. But if they're living in captivity, that means people are taking care of them, like in a zoo, they can live up to 50 years. Hmm. Why do you think they live longer in captivity than out in the wild? Hmm. Because they live longer when people are taking care of them. Do you think maybe because when people take care of them, just like if you have a cat or a dog or a pet at home, you always have to feed it, right? Just like mom and dad have to feed you. So these flamingos that are in captivity, they're always getting fed. Do you think that they're protected from predators or other animals hurting them? I think so. So those two factors allow them to live a much longer life 
than if they were just outside in the wild. Because outside in the wild, what if they can't find food, then they just don't eat. What if an animal is going to attack them? There's nobody really there to protect them. Okay, so where in the world? So look at this picture, oh my goodness. Tons of flamingos, just tons of those pink birds. You can see their dark pink um, skinny legs. And even in the background, even though it's blurred out, those are all flamingos as well. So on this page, we're gonna learn where do they live. Have you guys ever seen any flamingos if you've gone to the zoo? I know over the summer I took my boys to Lincoln Park Zoo and we definitely saw flamingos. Not this many, but we definitely saw flamingos. So those flamingos are in captivity. Okay, whoa, I just learned something new in this first sentence. There are six different kinds of flamingos. I had no idea there were six different kinds, I just thought they were all the same. Hmm. So I'm learning something new too. The greater flamingo can be found in Africa, parts of Europe, and Asia. The lesser flamingo lives in Africa and Asia. The American flamingo is easy to find on the islands of Cuba, Aruba, and the Bahamas. Um, when flamingos are found in the wild, it is in areas of large, shallow lakes, lagoons, mangrove swamps, and sandy islands. So kind of just like what we're seeing, the water's very shallow. That means it's there's not that much water. Most of the time, if flamingos are seen in the United States, it is in captivity. So we hear that word again. So it sounds like when I just read that, there really aren't flamingos in the United States. And the article's telling me if you do see a flamingo in the United States, you're probably going to see them at the zoo or like an aquarium or something like that in captivity because we just don't have the weather maybe for one for them to be living out in the wild. Just like we don't really see lions and tigers. The only place we see lions and tigers is like at the zoo in captivity. Okay. They just don't live in the United States. Hmm. So I learned a lot on that page. <gasps> look at this little baby flamingo. So take, take a careful look at this picture. So this this article section is called Young Flamingos. Excuse me. So we're gonna learn about baby flamingos. Take a look at that picture. So you can see the mama's webbed feet. That's when they have the skin in between. And that's to help her balance in that muddy water. Look at that little baby flamingo. What are you noticing? Yeah, I noticed the same thing. It's not pink yet. All right, so flamingo chicks will grow in their eggs for about a month. So like other birds, they're born from eggs. Their parents will take turns incubating them by sitting on them. So just like penguins, they have to sit on their eggs or like chickens, they sit on their eggs to keep them warm, to keep the baby warm. Chicks they have that have hatched will have white or gray feathers and swollen pink legs. So you could look down there, their legs are swollen. That means they're kind of fatter, they're thicker. Mother flamingos are one of the only three birds that produce milk to feed their young. After about seven days, chicks may venture out on their nests, but they stay with the other groups of chicks. This group is called a creche. After about 11 weeks, chicks will begin to grow their flight feathers, but they will begin swimming even earlier than that. So you think 11 weeks, that's not even three months old. Humans, when babies are not even three months old, they can't even sit up, they can't even crawl, they can't even walk, they might not even be able to hold their neck up, but baby flamingos, they're going swimming, they're learning um, to go out in the wild by themselves, so crazy stuff. All right, look at these beauties. So this one's called the gang's all here. Look at all of them. So they're hanging out together. Why do you think that flamingos hang out together in a group? Hmm. Why do you think? So flamingos are very social birds and will sometimes gather in groups of 1,000 or more. That's a really big group of flamingos, 1,000 flamingos. So I guess that's kind of what this picture was like in the background, even though they're all blurred, about a thousand flamingos. Could you imagine going to a party with a thousand people? It's crazy. 
Um, these groups are oftentimes called flocks. The flock is a way to protect themselves from predators. It also helps flamingos find the best food. Within these very large groups, they will break into smaller groups called colonies. The smaller groups are meant for finding mates. The smaller groups sometimes have a dance where they, are, where they stretch their necks and shake their feathers at the same time. So I guess that kind of answered our question, why do they hang out in groups? So they hang out in big groups to protect themselves from predators or other animals that could potentially harm them. And then it says in these big groups, they sometimes break into smaller groups to find a mate or to find a partner. Like mom and dad found each other. The flamingos want to go try and find each other to mate or to have a baby. Okay, last page. What's for dinner? So we already know from the story, Sylvie, that flamingos eat shrimp. That's how they get that beautiful pink color. I wonder if they eat anything else. What else do you think they could eat? Hmm. So take a look at their beaks too, just like any other bird. It has that beak to help them grab things. The flamingo has an interesting way of eating. Ugh. He will suck in the muddy water into his beak. Then he will push the water and the dirt back out the side of his beaks. He is able to capture all his food this way. Ugh. So he kind of just goes in, takes a mouthful of water, swishes the water, spits it out the side, and whatever else is left he eats. Ugh. Some flamingos like to eat small plants, while other flamingos eat small shrimp and insects. It all depends on the shape of its beak. So, I learned something new, that different flamingos have different shaped beaks. Hmm, so they eat different things. It all depends on the shape of his beak and what he can hold in the beak the best. The color of the flamingo's feathers completely depends on his diet. The foods that many flamingos like the most are rich in something called a carotenoid. <laughs> Okay, this plant pigment is also found in carrots. If you only ate carrots, your skin would turn orange. Crazy. So they like to eat little insects, little bugs, little plants, and shrimp. Okay, the last page is just some quick facts. So if so far throughout the article you didn't really gather anything new, maybe you're like a flamingo fanatic and you knew all this information. So I have one last page with four interesting facts about flamingos. And I just love this picture. It's such a pretty color. Could you imagine seeing this out in the wild? Like it's so beautiful. So did you know, so again, for this activity, you need two facts. Look, here's four more facts. Did you know that when you see the flamingo bending its knee, that's actually the flamingo's ankle? That's it's crazy. So if I look at this picture of Sylvie right here where it looks like it's knee, that's its ankle. And on humans, our ankle is right by our foot. I did not know that. Let's see what else we can learn. When a flamingo stands with one leg pulled up behind him or her, this is thought to conserve body heat. Hmm. So when it's only standing on one leg, it's keeping its body warm. Okay. The flamingo is the national bird of the Bahamas. I didn't know that either. And the greater flamingos grow to be about five feet tall and weigh only eight pounds. So eight pounds is pretty light, okay? And five feet tall, I mean, that's bigger than you guys, but much smaller than me. I'm about five eight. So I'm pretty tall. The flamingos a little bit shorter than me and only about eight pounds. And eight pounds is pretty light. So, I don't know about you, but I learned tons and tons of information about flamingos that I didn't know before from this article. Okay, your job now is maybe you wrote some facts down. Maybe you told mom or dad or whoever's with you, hey, write that down. That's very interesting. I like that. If you didn't catch anything, of course, you could rewind the video, go back to different parts. Maybe you like the part where I talked about the baby flamingos. Go back to that part and get some information. So then today you can work on this. 
What are two facts? Remember, I want you to do complete sentences. You can't just say flamingos are pink. We already knew that. Please don't say flamingos eat shrimp. We already knew that. What's something brand new that you did not know coming into this talk about flamingos that you learned from this article? That's what I want you to write here in complete sentences and then color your cute little flamingo. Okay, I can't wait to hear all the facts you learned tomorrow. See you guys later.